Welcome everyone to Armenian Christian Fellowship. We're glad you've joined us here another week online. Parikalus kamachting poloretal uraching for tartial merheda jamanak gans nekaisor. You know it says in Psalm 62, one thing God has spoken, two things have I heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. Surely you will reward each person according to what they have done. As we learn what God has to teach us today through His Word, let us keep in mind that whatever we go through, the Lord will reward us according to what we have done. And He has a great reward set for us in heaven, though today we might endure trials and tribulations. And so with that in mind, let's sing our first song, Cornerstone. It talks about God's unfailing love towards us through the storm that He is Lord and Lord of all. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood Righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within the veil Savior's love through the storm, and He is the Lord, Lord of all. In Christ alone, cornerstone, a weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. sound Oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne Christ alone cornerstone Savior's love through the storm, and He is the Lord, Lord of all. If He ma me as na par mi dier king urachem. Gero vidi naratan kinaye Ura hutiam kepak talovas The zoza vaginotin Mech sinkti mavore O 
ինչ մեծ բարկ է, ինչ մեծ շնորկ է, երբ ճանի հույս է, դեր ուչ կոմից ուրախ եմ, որքան ուրախ եմ, իշելով այս մեծ հույսը ծնձում է։ May the Lord bless you and always keep you happy and joyful. Let's continue to enjoy the rest of the service. Good afternoon, church. We're so glad you've joined us here at Armenian Christian Fellowship for our live streaming service. Um, we had a, a amazing and, and just such a great time last Sunday with church in the courtyard and celebrating what God is doing with his faithfulness uh, to our church. Um, so we continue on asking you to show up on Sundays at 1.30 uh, to join us for the celebration in the courtyard. Uh, we're going to continue that. We enjoyed that so much last week. Um, this Sunday, we have our baptism Sunday. We're going to uh, baptize two of our young people, James and Marina. So we ask that you continue on praying for them and continue on embracing them into our community here at Armenian Christian Fellowship. So right after the service, we'll head in, into the church sanctuary and baptize them. So we can't wait for you to um, see that and enjoy that. And we're so blessed to be able to do that. If you're gifted in the, in the areas of audio and visual, we, we continue on streaming our services and wanting to do more with that as we want to um, make our reach larger on the internet and things of that sort. So if you're gifted in these areas or you just want to help more and get plugged in, we ask that you come up to us and, and ask us how you can get involved or in any area of the church ministries. Please, we want to get you involved in our church ministry in our community. Um, all our studies this next week, continue on college and career group Tuesday nights uh, we'll be meeting at Pastor uh, Shantz and Jen's home at 7 p.m. if you're in the age group of college and career you're encouraged to be a part of that group our meeting Bible studies taking a break next week they just finished um, their Bible study series on Jonah they continue their series on Habakkuk after next week's break so they'll take a break next week and the study with Pastor Arden will start next Wednesday at 7 p.m. starting a new series on Habakkuk He's so excited to share with you about suffering, and Pastor Aaron is the right person to share that message, and that's going to be so empowering and seeing what God is going to do in that community. Um, youth group is continuing on Fridays at the beach at Huntington Beach. Uh, meet us at Tower 11. We'll be there from anyway after in the afternoon after 1 p.m. We encourage you guys to come with your families and enjoy a day of fellowship, uh, worship around the fire pit, and, and study of God's Word. Kids Church is still meeting 10.30 every Sunday morning. Kids, children, I'm so proud of you. 
your commitment to the Lord and to his word is, is faithful every single Sunday. We're so encouraged as your kids church team continue on being plugged in. Your, your teachers are so encouraging to still offer love and care and counsel over, over zoom. Um, we're so encouraged by that community. So parents continue on allowing your kids to be there at, on Sundays at 1030 over zoom. Ask Miss Sosi, Miss Ida, or Miss Nancy about that and get more details on that. We'll get that over to you. Um, Camp Arab, we just had our virtual Camp Arab. It was over two weeks long. We just had our junior high and our high school session. We're so blessed by that. So we let's continue on praying for our students in junior high and high school as they're being impacted by this virus and that the Lord will still be able to use many uh, avenues to reach them with God's word and fellowship. Church, at this time, we want you to still continue on giving to the Lord, still continue your worship. And how we can do that is by offering and giving our gifts to the Lord. Um, you can still give uh, through check and posting that to our, our church's mail. Um, someone's still going to be depositing that every single week. We also encourage you to give through our uh, our virtual app, uh, PushPay, and you can do that and go to our church app or our website to uh, give as well. If there's anything you need at this time, we encourage you to uh, call the church office so that we can pray with you and pray for you. And, and any kind of counseling or any type of encouragement, please call the church office and one of our pastors are there to stand by and, and to be with you during this time. We know it is very difficult. Would you pray with me, church, during this time? Father, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your grace, your mercy. Lord, it has no end. We thank you, Lord, that yet we're still sinners, Lord God, yet there's none of us that are good. Father, you, you loved us. You showed your grace and love to us. Father, help us, Father God, to know that you've called us through your foreknowledge, Lord, to be your children. Lord, help us to, to honor you, Father God, to seek after you, to put you first in our lives. Lord, we thank you for, Lord, this opportunity is to reach the community for you, Father. Help us, Lord, to reach our neighbors, to reach our family for you, Christ, to, to be genuine and authentic Christians, showing real love and real faith to them. Lord, we praise you and we worship you this Lord's day. We give you all glory and all honor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. Hello, Armenian Christian Fellowship of Orange County. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, my name is Aden, and uh, Pastor Shunt is not here right now. Uh, he just told me a couple days ago that he has really hurt his back. And there have been many times in my life that he has my back. And so I am back here today. All right. It is wonderful to worship the Lord alongside you. Uh, we have a good God. And as I reflected on his goodness, these few verses from Psalm 119 came to mind, starting with verse 65. Do good to your servant according to your word, O Lord. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I believe in your commands. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. These verses say that God is good, that he always does what is good, and we pray for him to do good, no matter our circumstances, so that one day, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we would be able to say that it is good that we went through this in light of how it shaped and strengthened our heart for the Lord. And so because God is good to us in Christ, let's pray. Father, we are grateful that you are the good shepherd and we have no lack. Thank you that in Christ, all the spiritual blessings of the heavenly places are ours. Thank you that you are so bountiful with mercy and grace towards us. The climax of which was at the cross. And that gives us assurance for today and tomorrow that you are with us and for us. And so with peace in our hearts, with joy in our hearts, we want to worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. 
I'm so glad to be with you once more to preach from the Word. If you have your Bible with you, I'd like for you to open up to Psalm 34. The message this morning will be from Psalm 34. This is what God's Word says. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never, their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word, which is truthful and powerful. I thank you for the good news in this psalm, and I pray that now you would open the eyes of our hearts, that we can see, behold, believe, be refreshed, be restored. I pray that this would fill us with joy and we would leave with a heart of worship. So Father, I pray that you would keep our minds and our hearts from being distracted and overwhelmed by any and every other issue. And instead, may we be gripped by your word today from Psalm 34. In Jesus' name, amen. I think we all need, need some good news this morning. We have had enough bad news or depressing news. And instead, I think we need some good news. We hear about unemployment and sickness and racial tension and conflicts around the world. We hear about the virus and the damage that it brings on many people. I just heard of a friend who passed away from cancer yesterday. We, we hear enough sad, difficult, depressing news. We are almost used to such news. But when we hear good news, we almost don't know what to do with that. When we get good news, as we see in this passage, this is something that our hearts need. And that is why I wanted to turn to this specific passage. I spent time in the last week or two uh, thinking about this psalm, and yet it was a week ago, uh, Tuesday, uh, morning that we received some really, really good news about the health update of a loved one. We had heard bad news and confusing news till that day, but what joy to hear of something good. We smiled and there was a deep sense of relief. Oh, we were so thankful to the Lord. But in that moment, how, how did I respond? How should I respond? How, how can we handle good news in the right way? Now, we know about bad news. We're familiar with that. We respond by getting angry or complaining or being bitter or just distracting ourselves. But how do we handle good news? In that moment, in the days and weeks to come, our hearts need Psalm 34. 
And so before we look at Psalm 34, I want to address two wrong responses of the heart. Before we get to good news, let me address two wrong responses. First, cynicism. We become cynical of good news. It, is this real? Because I doubt it. I'm not sure I can be happy just yet about this. I wonder when the next bad news will come. And so we don't listen. We resist. Deep within, we lay a wall of hardness in our hearts. We receive good news, but we, we have this bitterness or pessimism inside of us. Why? Where does this cynicism come from? Maybe it's because we assume that the Lord works according to our definition and timing of goodness. We pray and wait, but still the situation is not fixed as we had hoped or assumed. And so after all that we've done, maybe we assume that God owes us goodness. And when he doesn't deliver promises that he never made in the first place, we become frustrated or angry. We become cynical. We have a shallow and overly simple idea of how the Christian life works. And when we see that it's not working, we stop trusting in the goodness of the Lord. We just can't handle any more disappointment and confusion and unanswered prayer. Two wrong responses of the heart. First, cynicism. Second, passivity. We hear good news and we belittle it. We ignore it. We take it lightly and we move on. God is really good, and yet we are overly familiar with this idea. And so we don't give thanks, and we don't rejoice, and we don't give God the credit. We do not speak to others about the good works of God in our life. We hear good news, but a minute later, nothing seems to have changed. Let me ask you this question. As you think about your situation today, whatever it might be, your circumstance that you're dealing with today, do you assume that that is the center of everything? Do you assume that your situation is the most important, and so fixing that situation is the most important task for you? And in that case, is this really about you, or is it about the Lord who is at the very center of our lives? Do we assume that today is most important, and do we forget that there's more to the story, that tomorrow is coming? Do we assume that the physical is all that there is, and we forget that there is a spiritual life to our story? The circumstance of today is not the most important. Yes, this is part of your story, but there's a bigger story being written here. There is a work far greater and far more that God is doing in our lives. This morning, let us look above and beyond our own circumstance, whatever that might be. Lift your eyes and see the Lord. By faith in Christ for new life, we become one with Christ. We live in and with Christ. And in Christ, we experience the fullness of God's goodness. Here are two important words for you. God is. God is. He is real. And all that goodness that the Bible speaks of for those in Christ is real as well. The Lord is really good for those who are in Christ. The goodness of God, that is the message for you this morning. And so in your situation, are you being cynical? Are you being passive? The right knowledge and relationship and response to the Lord will keep your hearts from being cynical and passive, especially in a season of goodness. Knowing him, knowing that he is, will protect us from a bitter and a passive heart, from an overly negative and a wandering heart. No matter what our circumstance is this morning, know that the Lord is really good to you in Christ. And so guard your heart from a wrong response. We're dealing with the goodness of God because that is the context for this song. Right under the heading, it says, of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech so that he drove him out and went away. What happened? Uh, David had not yet been crowned king. Because he did well in battle, the people were singing his praises that he had done 10 times more than Saul. And with jealousy brewing in his heart, Saul tried to kill him several times. He threw the spear at him, hoping to nail him. And this one time we see that David fled to Gath, the hometown of Goliath, whom he had killed. And the sword in his hand belonged to Goliath. 
And so he is standing before the king Abimelech, and to spare his life, he pretended he was out of his mind. He acted crazy, and his life was spared. On this occasion, he writes Psalm 34, where he does not mention the clever idea he had. He does not give himself credit. He only speaks of the goodness of God. And so with a heart of worship, he writes a beautiful acrostic psalm with each line starting with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. He worships from the beginning to the ending of the alphabet, and he still has more to say. The right knowledge and experience of God keeps our hearts from being cynical and passive in a season of goodness. In this psalm, verses 1 to 10 help us address that cynical heart. And verses 11 to 22 addresses the passive heart. The testimony of the first half keeps our hearts from being bitter with distrust. And the instruction of the second half keeps our hearts from being forgetful of God. Look with me at the first part. There we shall see the call to worship the Lord, for he is really good to us. Not only do we experience the goodness of God, but more than that, the God of all goodness who is so close to us. Verses 1 to 3 call us to worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. He says, I will worship the Lord, Yahweh, the one who makes and keeps his promises, the covenant-making and keeping God, the Lord who is our God, and we are his people. We are to worship him always and in every circumstance, especially that situation that you are facing here today. Above and beyond the circumstances of today, God is and therefore we worship. There's not a day nor a circumstance where worship is not the right response. Worship is not based on the changing circumstances, but on the unchanging character of God. God is, and therefore our worship must be. Honestly, you might not be feeling like singing today. You don't feel like lifting up your voice. But that is when we ought to do so because we fight when we sing. We build up our faith by singing. Let us sing and let the afflicted hear and rejoice, it says. There is a ministry that takes place when God's people sing, because there is a person there going through that situation, humble, afflicted, broken, needs to hear your singing. This is hard. We don't wake up in the morning with singing in our hearts. During the day, anxiety comes easily. Worship might not. Over time, our hearts can lean towards unbelief after all the disappointments. But let us sing. Why? Verses 4 to 7 point us to the goodness of God. I saw the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. But keep reading. You can see the goodness of God in verses 15 through 19 as well. Such goodness is not abstract or theoretical. This goodness is experiential. This is not something we simply read about or or learn about from a book. Those in Christ experience the goodness of God in their lives. I saw it. He answered me. He delivered me from my fears. He cried, and the Lord heard him. For those of us who doubt God's goodness, who put a question mark to the goodness of God where he has put a period, to those whose hearts have a wall up against God, listen to this man's testimony. He speaks with joy, with confidence, with certainty. In that moment in Gath, in the hometown of Goliath, he prayed and God answered him in the right time and just in the right way. That was no coincidence. This poor man cried a short, desperate prayer and God heard him. Even now, while you're listening to me, maybe you are unsure of this. Even now you are approaching this with unbelief. Maybe in the midst of all that I'm saying here, there's one word that you're hearing that you're not okay with, to be honest. 
And that word is all. Verse 4. How can God really deliver from all his fears? Or look at verse 6. Does God really save him from all his troubles? Again, verse 17. Does God really deliver him from all his troubles? Yes, he escaped Gath, but Saul was still trying to hunt him down. So in what way did God deliver him from all his fears? Saving from all his troubles doesn't mean that everything on the outside was fixed. It means his heart was. More than seeing a way out, verse 4 says that he sought God. He was looking above and beyond his situation to look to the Savior. He trusted God. And with prayer, the burdens switched shoulders. The burdens switched shoulders from him to God. God was caring for him. God was carrying all of his problems. Above and beyond all that was happening in his life, God was working on his life. But there is more. He worships here. He is joyful here, not only because of the goodness of God, but more than that, because of the God of all goodness. And we have seen this already. This is in a relationship with the Lord himself. The Lord hears. The Lord delivers. The Lord saves. More than getting goodness, those in Christ get God. Charles Spurgeon once said, quote, God is too good to be unkind, and he is too wise to be mistaken. And when we cannot trace his hand, we must trust his heart. Let me say that again. When we cannot trace his hand, we can trust his heart. So you might be looking at your situation and you're not sure how God is working and where he is leading and what he is doing and if and how he is saving from all the troubles, but you know his heart. As Yahweh, he keeps and he makes and keeps promises. He is your shepherd. He is your savior. You know his heart. And so you can trust in him still. If your heart tends to be doubtful, unbelieving, listen to verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Jonathan Edwards once said, quote, Thus there is a difference between having an opinion that God is holy and gracious and having a sense of the loveliness and beauty of that holiness and grace. In other words, it's one thing to believe that God is good and holy, but it's something else to marvel at the wonder, the beauty, the loveliness of that grace. He goes on. There's a difference between having a rational judgment that honey is sweet and having a sense of its sweetness. So it's one thing to hear that honey is sweet, to read about it, to talk about it. It's something else to eat honey, right? Or let me give you another example. For those of us who are Middle Eastern, there is a breakfast, a very sweet breakfast you can eat. Um, actually, there's a pastry shop just down the street that sells this. It's called Kunefe Bujipni. Now, you might say, what is Kunefe Bujipni? I might say, it's a breakfast. You might say, okay, but what are the ingredients? Now, to answer that, I might say, well, there's bread, there's cheese, and there's syrup. Now, that might be odd to you. You might be wondering, what, that sounds like a sweet grilled cheese sandwich? What? That, that sounds odd. Kinefib Zhipni just consists basically of those three ingredients, bread, cheese, and syrup. But it's something else. If I invited you over and we walked down to that pastry down the street and I bought some for you, then you bite into that cheesy, syrupy breakfast. That is something else. You won't be hungry for the rest of the day, by the way. But, but experiencing, tasting of that sweetness is different compared to if I just listed to you bullet points of ingredients. Faith is tasting. Faith is enjoying. Faith is real and personal. Not hearing about God, but experiencing and enjoying the loveliness and the beauty of his character. So for those of us who are saved by Christ through faith, we not only receive the bountiful goodness of God, but we get God himself, the fountain of all goodness. Goodness not from his hands, but the goodness is tasting him. And because we have God, 
we can say that he has saved us from all our troubles, even when we are still in that day of trouble. Because we have God, we can worship him at all times. Because, verse 18 says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Over five years ago, I had the worst day of my life. The event of that day, I would say, made it the darkest, heaviest, hardest moment of my life. The event of that day was so overwhelming. I don't want to get into it into detail right now. It's going to take a while, but it took me six to eight months to recover from that dark day. It was hard, and yet God came through. And as I Months later, as I was reflecting on that day, on what happened to us and how God saved us, the comment that I made to a friend was that I was experiencing my theology. What I mean is, my beliefs and convictions about God's love, power, and wisdom were no longer a set of truths I learned about, but I experienced and rested in on that day. My theology, in a sense, was holding me. I didn't casually hold on to the doctrine of God. It was the truths of God that were holding me. I experienced the God of all goodness. I tasted and saw that he was really good. This saves us from a cynical heart and leads, leads us to worship the God of all goodness. The goodness of God saves, and the fear of God keeps us. The goodness of God keeps us from being cynical and the fear of God keeps us from being passive and forgetful. The first leads to worship and the second leads to holiness. The right knowledge and relationship and response to God will keep our hearts from being cynical and passive, especially in a season of goodness. So are you being passive, forgetful? Are you prone to wander? Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Are you prone to wonder? Fear God. While at the beginning and ending of this psalm, we see this emphasis on the goodness of God, we read about the fear of God in verses 9 to 14. Here we see the why and how of fearing God. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. This is the why of fearing God, and here's the how. Come, O children, listen to me, and I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Fear God. What does that mean? It means the very opposite of taking him lightly. Take God very seriously. Remember that he is. And that changes everything. In this verse, fearing the Lord is parallel to seeking the Lord. He says, fear the Lord. And right after he says, seek the Lord. Seeking means to set our hearts and our minds on the Lord alone. Let us seek him. Yes, on the one hand, he is omnipresent. Yes, he is already with his people in Christ. But more than that, let us pursue a deep and closer relationship with him. Why? Because when we fear and look and seek hope and hunger and wait on the Lord, we will be at peace. We will be content. When we have the Lord, we will have no lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. For those who fear him have no lack. Verse 9. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Verse 10, lack no good thing. I remember one day when we were going through a difficulty, I told my wife, Trina, you are a non-lacker. In Christ, you lack no good thing. The promise of this verse cuts off the head of the lies that we hear about holiness. Holiness is pointless. Holiness will not bring you happiness. To which we say, no, those in holiness will lack no good thing. The command to fear God does not leave us passive. The promises of not lacking anything don't leave us passive. 
In a season of goodness, we avoid passivity by being holy in the fear of the Lord. When you and I hear good news after a while, do we not forget? Do we not move on? Do we not consider this too familiar? Let us not be passive before the goodness of God. Instead, as it says in 11 to 14, let us fear God and live in holiness. Yes, we receive the goodness from God, but let us walk in holiness before God. The first will keep you from a cynical heart, the second from a passive heart. And so if you want a close relationship with the Lord, if you want to keep tasting and seeing that he is good, do not take him lightly. The testimony of verses 1 to 10 is followed by instruction, starting with verse 11. So what are we to do? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. What are we to do? Speak truthfully. Restore relationships. Act righteously. And we see that last one in verses 15 to 17. So first, speak truthfully. We might be tempted to lie, to slander, and cut someone with our words, to gossip, to spread half-truths, to speak publicly about private matters. Maybe someone shares something with confidence, and you go out and talk about it, hoping it'll ruin their name. Using your words to boast about yourself or spreading various rumors. Again, we do this to feel good, to lift ourselves up, to put others down so that we're no longer the focus so people don't notice our own issues. But sin will never bring happiness. God will not let his children sin successfully and get away with it. But holiness helps. Holiness brings happiness. And so because of the goodness of God behind us and because of the promise of God ahead of us, speak truthfully. What sin of the tongue do you need to confess today? Who do you need to apologize to and be reconciled with? In what situation do you need to speak the truth today? Number two, restore relationships. Turn away from speaking evil or doing evil. And instead, do good. We see the goodness throughout the psalm. Verse eight, the Lord is good. Verses four to seven, the Lord is good to his own. Verses nine and ten, The Lord will give all that is good to those who fear and seek him so that, verse 13, we can and should do good. And so in your marriage, do good. Do good to your parents. Do good to your neighbors. Do good to those who live or think differently than you. Do good to those you disagree with. Do good to the strangers. Do good to those you are in conflict with. God is perfectly good, and if we are his children, let us be known for our goodness towards others. There is no exception. There are no excuses. Do not talk about peace. Pursue it. And number three, act righteously. The promise of God's watchful eye and listening ear in verses 15 and 17 are for those who are righteous, those who live in a right relationship with him and with others. The message today is about the goodness of God. The tendency in our hearts is to be unbelieving on the one hand and passive on the other. But knowing God, seeking God, tasting and fearing God will keep us from both. For those who are in Christ, God is very good to you. But maybe you are still having a hard time accepting that. Maybe you're you're already saying, if only you knew what these days have been like for me to which I respond and say, I don't. I will not assume that I know, but I know one who does see and hear all that you are going through in Christ. If you struggle to see or believe or rest in the goodness of God, listen, verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are are towards the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The Lord sees you. The Lord hears you. You are not alone. Your circumstance might be one thing, but the Lord still is. You will never face a day nor a minute away from the watchful eye of God, away from the compassionate heart of God. Your prayers will never fall on deaf ears. He sees and hears and is near. He is not distant. Verse 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And we see the nearness the most when Jesus came to earth. He was near the brokenhearted. He carried our sorrows. He went to the cross for our sins. 
And on the cross, he cried, it is finished. On that day, he cried, it is finished. The Jews did not want three bodies on the cross during Sabbath. And so Pilate commanded, they had Pilate go and take care of this. And so Pilate commanded that the legs be broken. And they broke the legs of the two. But when they came to Jesus, they did not break his legs, for he had died already. Why? John 19, 36, for these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. On the cross, Jesus fulfilled Psalm 34, 20, which says he keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Jesus is the righteous one of verses 15 to 17. Jesus is the righteous one that the Lord sees and hears. And yet he did face the cross so that we would not have to. He did face trouble so that we would not finally and fully face trouble. It is in Jesus that we have the assurance of the fullness of God's goodness upon us. And then so as you question and doubt the goodness of God, as you put a question mark to this goodness, as you tend to be more cynical, as you're tempted to forget and belittle, remember that through Jesus, all the promises of God are yes and amen. We truly have and can personally experience the goodness of God, but far more the God of all goodness. And so let us... Say the following together. Psalm 34, 1 to 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. Father, I pray now for those who have heard this message, that they would truly and personally experience and rest in your goodness. I pray that knowing you will guard their hearts from a wrong response, from being bitter or being passive. I pray that their hearts would aim for worship and would aim for holiness, that your goodness would not leave them the same. Father, Open the eyes of their hearts that they can see that in Christ, the fullness of your blessings are theirs. And so fill them with joy once more. And in all this, may you get all the credit and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, church. Jesus said we will have many difficult times and trials, and indeed we are. But he said, fear not for I have overcome the world. So we can have joy today and sing to a victorious God. Sing with me the song called Overcome.
Let's close our worship time in prayer. Father, we pray that now as we go on with our day and we start our week, we know that there's quite a bit of questions we have on our minds, a lot of uncertainty of what the coming days look like. We're facing various anxieties and fears, various decisions and family situations, but Lord, you know all this. You are in control of all this. And so we ask that you would give us wisdom for daily life. You would give us the strength to do what is right. You would give us peace in the midst of whatever we are facing. Father, we're grateful that we have this peace through Jesus Christ who reconciled us to you. And thank you that because of that work of reconciliation, we can have peace in the coming days and situations as well. And now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you. Amen.